All right, guys. So this video, this is gonna be a little different than my normal stuff. And honestly, I've been trying to stay out of this whole ordeal. Obviously, I've seen a lot about this uh, Trevor Jacob video. I've been tagged and, and messaged enough times now that I feel like it's probably time that I uh, kind of address the topic. All right, now before we get into this, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Trent. I'm a private pilot. I'm not a CFI or ATP guy. I'm just a private pilot, so take that for what it's worth. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and watch this video and give you guys just my honest reactions to what I'm seeing, and then at the end we'll kind of circle back and I'll give you guys my thoughts and kind of a, a wrap up on what's going on here. I'm over the mountains and I fucked out of Asia now. Okay, so obviously right from the start, he showed um, a little bit of what was gonna happen and then went through this big long disclaimer about how, um, you know, he th didn't know if he'd have the courage to post this video, but everyone should fly with a parachute. I will say right off the bat, um, the type of parachute he's wearing is not the one that you would wear in an aircraft that you sit on. This is like a skydiving parachute. So that's a little strange. Also, I. You know, I don't know if it's just because my interests on YouTube are similar to what he's posting about, but I have seen some of Trevor's videos pop up on my feed before, and I don't recall him ever wearing a parachute in other videos, but um, but anyway, that's a discussion for later. What's happening? How's it going? My name's Trevor Jacob. We are here at the end of the runway. Gonna go fly the 1940 Taylor Craft up to Mammoth and uh, do some paragliding, do some snowboarding. It's gonna be a super good time. I got my best friend, Johnny Strange's ashes with me. We are going to go paraglide off of one of his favorite mountains up in the Sierra Nevadas and uh, spread some of those. So I'm super grateful he'll be joining us. Got to give a shout out to the Ridge Wallet. We'll be doing the run up and we'll be on our way soon. So much love. We'll see you in the air. I, I'm sure all of you guys that watch this notice this immediately, but what is going on with this fuel line that's just hanging with the fuel selector valve? Like not even plumbed into the wing. That's a little strange. I don't know if you guys noticed that. Let me go back, but I think, okay. At this part, you can see that the, the door doesn't seal that great. There's a little bit of a gap there, but the next shot, which is the one when the engine quits, it looks like his door's already unlatched. Let me double check that. No, it fully is. That door is already sitting two inches open. So obviously this video is gonna be filled with red flags, which is why so many people are worked up over it. But I mean, that one to me, right off the gate, I don't know why you just happened to have already had your door unlatched in the event of an engine failure that you were planning to jump out of or prepared to jump out of. That's just a little fishy. Okay, that's the point that the engine quits. What is he? And then here, it cuts to that, the angle from under the strut, and he is pulling on the yoke, like, drastically, almost like he's trying to slow the plane down to stall speed. And the only reason I could think that he's doing that is just to try to get the prop to stop for dramatic effect. If you were to have your engine quit, which, you know, I guess I should go back to this. It's not that I don't have any ground to stand on. I have had uh, engine failure over the mountains similar to this, um, I was at a much lower altitude. Um, mine didn't quit in the way that was like fuel starvation or anything, I had a mechanical failure and the thing stopped so violently, I didn't have to do anything to stop the prop. But when I've shut off the engine you know, in the past, the force from the wind will make the prop windmill. And this is even on a Rotax of the high compression engine, on something like this Continental or whatever's on this Taylor Craft, it's gonna be lower compression, just the air blowing over, it's gonna windmill the prop. And what it looks like he's doing here, and this is again, at least in the way it plays out in the video, is right after the engine failed, he's pulling it back to stall and basically sitting there trying to get it as slow as he can, which 
is not what you do when your engine quits. You, you pitch for best glide or at least deal with flying the aircraft and start looking for somewhere to land. And while on that topic of, of looking for somewhere to land, there, I mean, at this angle right now, there's not a ton of great places to land. Um, although even this, you know, grassy hillside looks, you know, manageable. But anyway, it's a little suspect that he's immediately pulling on the yoke, trying to get it slow. It's also suspect that his door's already unlatched. I don't know. Now I got the prop to stop. I'd be really interested to see the inside angle because he has two other cameras inside the plane, but for some reason he doesn't show anything going on inside until this angle. And now it looks like he's holding on to the camera. Holy I'm over the mountains and I get out of Asia now. Not even, not even like looking for a place to land. Oh, that thing's like buffeting on stall right now. Which I guess if you're jumping out of a plane and you have the option to slow it down, I guess you do. Okay, that, again, there's, there's a, a ton of things that are just wrong about this video, but aside from him deciding to fly with a skydiving parachute instead of one that you would use for test flying or, or you know, the seat back ones that you use in an airplane, if he's really in an emergency situation right now, this is life or death, um, why would he be, well, one, why would you have a camera in your hand and, and selfie it, but why are you tracking out and and looking back and posing for something like this looking at your airplane i'm sure he's going to say something like you know i was making sure that the airplane wasn't going to fly at me or hit me when i was you know when i had the chute deployed but it just it's fishy and then also right behind him i mean that looks like a pretty nice little like gravel wash or sand wash that i'm fairly confident you can land your plane in Still, still free falling. How to get that shot? Did he pull out his phone to film the plane crashing. Yeah, look at this whole wash behind him. That looks like a totally landable spot. And, and then, you know, when it, when it comes to emergency landings, in, in a scenario like this, say his engine actually did fail, emergency landings are made to save lives, not airplanes. And I can, with fairly high confidence, say that there is somewhere in that wash that you could glide to that you're gonna be able to walk away from. It might wreck your plane, but again, at that point, it should be insurance's airplane. Um, you go and try to land your airplane. It's just the hazard that he's creating by jumping out of the airplane and just letting it fly is ridiculous. Again, I'll circle back to this, but man. Okay, so again, I don't know what's going on in his head. It looked like from where he was gliding under the parachute that he could have easily made it to that wash, which looked like a much safer place to land and an easier place to get out of. So it, it's all just, it's all questionable. I don't understand why you would fly back towards the airplane unless you were just trying to get video or footage from the airplane or of the airplane, which kind of seems to be the case. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh. Get me out of this. Get the off of me. Come on. Dude. Well, where the hell am I gonna land a freaking plane? I'm gonna die. That's why I always freaking fly with a parachute. No fun. Okay, the where am I gonna land? I'm gonna freaking die. That's that's not true. I mean, the the yes, the the options that he had there were not that great. But that said, it wasn't like he was over some like crazy rock cliff faces or tall pine trees that would eat you alive. I mean, that kind of brush is nasty. But if you were to match terrain and flare into it, I'm fairly sure that Taylor Craft's gonna be landing at 40 miles an hour. It's gonna be survivable. And also with the altitude he had, it wasn't out of the question that he would have been able to easily at least make that drainage, if not an even better one. Um, and then also going back to the parachute thing, like I said, I've never seen him wear a parachute flying before. So that's just, that's interesting. On service, I'm climbing literally through the gnarliest freaking bushes. I got so much poison oak and freaking cuts everywhere. Ah. I've called for help multiple times. I don't have any service. And by the way, that myth that 911 works when you don't have phone service is total BS. Oh my gosh. That 911 thing that um, if you don't have cell service, sometimes 911 will work. Supposedly, it, let's say you're on AT&T and there's no coverage there, but Verizon does have coverage. When you dial 911, it's supposed to be able to leech off other carriers' towers, but that's assuming that you have some cell service or that a different carrier would. So, you know, there's some truth to that, but it's not always gonna work. Again, I, I'm still just, I guess I don't understand why he's going back to the plane instead of trying to get out to safety. I'm trying to see if there's anything that would be like a sign of what caused the engine failure, but at that point it's, I mean. Also, I think he's gonna be pretty selective of what he shows here. The water jug in the back. <sighs> oh my gosh, dude. I have no idea where I am. <sighs> I, oh, ow, ah. Okay, I think at this point, it just looks like it's the, the hike out, um, which I'm not as interested in. Yeah, and at the end he ends up. Oh. All right, we have officially made it to the top on a count of three to Johnny. And we are ready to go. Okay, so at the end he ends up going and, and doing the, the paragliding with the ashes of his buddy, but I don't know, it's, you know, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and say that maybe there's some authenticity in this, but I just have way too many questions. Like, so if he was going up to Mammoth to go paragliding, where was his paragliding rig? And I guess it was already up there because that helmet and the setup that he's using right now is not what he was wearing on his back after he had the engine out. Um, also, you know, why after you opened your parachute, did you chase the airplane? Why did you free fall for so long? Why was that valve? loose on the airplane and, and why did you already have your door unlatched prepared to jump out before the engine quit? It's just, it's all just a little too fishy. So I see, I guess I see why people are getting so worked up over this and honestly, uh, if I'm being completely frank, it, it frustrates me as well. And the reason being is that here in the United States, we have the most freedoms there are in the world when it comes to general aviation. But that said, it's a privilege, not a right. And up until this day and age, the FAA's regulations have been written in blood, meaning that someone had to die or get seriously injured for them to come up with new regulations. But now with the social media outlets where people can go and pull stunts like this, the FAA is gonna be shown new issues that were previously not issues. So when someone pulls a stunt like this and creates what I would definitely call hazard to persons and property on the surface by jumping out of their airplane when it wasn't necessary and letting it fly down and crash. And sure, it was in a sparsely populated area, no one was hurt, it didn't cause a fire, but that's not to say that it couldn't happen. It's just, all of this is just so grossly irresponsible and it sucks because these kind of actions end up affecting all of us as pilots. 
Again, regulations come from people doing stupid stuff, and this is a perfect example of something stupid that could lead to more regulations that are gonna overly burden the rest of us. Now, the other thing too, you know, like you guys know, I'm an aviation content creator. Um, and the YouTube beast is a, an interesting one, and it obviously rewards people that get the clicks and get the views. And so we're always gonna be in a battle of getting people's eyes on our videos as well as making compelling and, and good engaging content without being ridiculous like this. So I'm not gonna say I'm perfect in, in that respect. I try to uh, remain as authentic as possible. I think that's something that I, I probably have as one of my core qualities that I don't wanna just go out and do super clickable stuff or you know really over sensationalize anything I do. Trevor obviously draws that line in a different spot. I've seen his other videos. I get that he likes to try to, you know, build things up and, and kind of dramatize. But this one's just way over the line. And it frustrates me because when someone does something like this, goes out and intentionally, apparently intentionally crashes an airplane to get views, it looks bad on all aviation content creators. And it, it's frustrating because there's only so much I can do to try to separate myself from someone like Trevor. And, you know, all I can say is, Trevor, come on, dude. To post a video like this and not have some sort of talking follow-up, like I'm doing right now, to explain all these things. I mean, there are blatant issues in the video that make it look very intentional that I would have really liked to have seen some explanation for. I don't know guys, on an overall basis, I, I, I'll be interested to see where this lands for him. Um, I know for a fact that the FAA and the NTSB have to be all over him. He said that he had reported it to him, but that was probably prior to them seeing the video of what happened. Um, and as far as regulations, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what regs are gonna pertain. I know that there's, you know, there's a regulation about dropping stuff from an aircraft and not being able to cause hazard to persons and property on the surface. I don't think that the aircraft could be considered an object dropped from the aircraft, but uh, there is the regulation 91119, which is a flight at a safe altitude. And basically what that states is that at any point, a flight must be conducted at an altitude that in the event of a power unit failure or your engine failing, an emergency landing can be conducted with undue hazard to persons and property on the surface. So that's a, a long one and there's a bit of gray in there because you're talking about undue hazard. But if he is truly flying at an altitude that he said he couldn't glide down safely and he had to bail out of the airplane, and to me, that would definitely cause undue hazard by having zero control of the aircraft and just letting it fly where it wants, then I would say he probably wasn't at a safe enough altitude. Um, again, he looked like he had all sorts of altitude, higher than I would ever cruise in a plane like that, and most people would. And also the amount of time between the engine failure and him jumping was extremely suspect. So if I was the FAA or if I was someone to, to make a bet on what the FAA is gonna come after him for, um, that regulation's probably gonna be in play because again, if he wasn't at an altitude that he could make an emergency landing without undue hazard, then he wasn't flying high enough. So. That's what I would suspect the FAA is gonna come after him for. You know, I hope they do something. And not to say that I ever feel like anyone should be made an example of, but this one's just so, so public, so uh, apparently intentional. I feel like, you know, this would be the time that, that probably the proper enforcement action should be taken. So again, this video, just cringe across the board. There's so many red flags. And you know, speaking of the cringe thing too, I really don't like how at the start of the video, he goes from talking about his friend who recently passed away and goes immediately into an ad read for the Ridge Wallet. That's just not very tasteful, man. So Trevor, if you're watching this, I highly suggest you go on Skillshare and take the course YouTube Success, build an authentic channel that's worth the follow. It's by Sorella Moore, and I guarantee there's some stuff you can learn from this. And conveniently, Skillshare happens to be the sponsor of this video. 
For those of you that don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for curious and creative individuals. They've got thousands of inspiring courses for everything from video and photo work to interior design, graphics, illustration, and more. And you guys know, it's 2022 now. New year, new us, time to build some new skills. And hey, I know that we just went through basically the great resignation. Everyone is quitting their jobs to find better jobs. There is never a better time to work on adding a couple extra tools to your belt. And Skillshare is the way to do it. And since Skillshare is specifically built for learning, every single class is gonna come with a video course as well as a class project. It's broken down into bite-sized pieces so you can fit it into pretty much any schedule. And there's no ads or anything, so it's very easy to sit down, dive in, and learn a new skill. So the first thousand of you to click the link below will get a free one month membership to Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. Thank you again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. And yeah, I hope you guys didn't mind this little uh, departure from my normal content. Again, I tried to stay out of this one. I tried to keep it quiet. I waited way too long to make this, but it seemed uh, something that wasn't gonna go away. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. You know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you on the next one. Peace.